So what I will do at this point, we will play the video and I will stop the video at certain points uh, and give you some narrative and descriptive as we go through it. So Carlos, can you go ahead and stop the video? As you look at this video, and what we are looking at here is inside the Cromwell, and these are the patrons intending to participate in the Dre's nightclub, or attend, or gain entry into the Dre's nightclub. And what we have done is you'll see some highlighted portions that are uh, instrumental in what we go through in the video. And so direct your attention to the highlighted portions, and we will walk through it. So go ahead, Carl. Sure. If you see here with the arrow, that's Mr. Bennett. Uh, attempting to gain entry into the nightclub. He has approached the VIP lounge, identified himself, and he has gained entry into the VIP line. Yes? The back slide. I can't see the video then. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and stop. So then I'll direct your attention in this area here. Um, two individuals engage in a verbal uh, discussion slash argument and eventually it ends into a fight which causes the, the patrons in this area to disperse. Go ahead and stop it, Carl. So these individuals are dispersing because of the stanchions we had described earlier. Uh, earlier, we believe these were the stanchions that caused the noise uh, that we believe to be the active shooter previously. But in actuality, we determined through investigation there was another fight that occurred up out of screen here. We were unable to obtain video where additional stanchions were knocked to the ground. The stanchions in this area were knocked to a carpeted area, so subsequently they would not have made the noise that we expected. Uh, but the stanchions over in this area were on a tile area, which would sound like gunshots, which created the call for service and in turn caused our officers to respond to the Cromwell. And you will see the action from that noise here shortly. So subsequently, the patrons hit the ground believing there's being shots fired. Unbeknownst to them, it was a result of a, a fight in another location. <clears throat> so go ahead and back that up, Carlos. I think it's important for everybody to see this video portion here and understand what's taking place. So the highlighted here, you'll see Mr. Bennett appear in a crouched stance and proceed to the rear of the uh, slot machines there. And we have two officers that are looking, trying to evaluate what's going on. Go ahead and stop. Evaluate what's going on in that location. Go ahead. So can you back that up, Carl? So what you saw just there uh, previously was Mr. Bennett crossing through the exit and attempting to gain uh, access to the outside, running past other patrons and eventually exiting the door there.
So go ahead and back it up, guys. That's good right there, stop it. So right here, uh, what you just saw was uh, there was a three officer team. There was two officers, one in a metro uniform similar to what I am wearing, uh, an officer in green uniforms, uh, more of a tactical uniform, and then a sergeant who body camera is displaying this video. Uh, he is to the rear of this officer. Of note, uh, the officer that has already exited the doorway there, gave him chase to Mr. Bennett, has already gone over the wall that we described earlier in the previous press conference and is attempting to take Mr. Bennett into custody. He separated from his two officers here in order to gain to uh, chase down Mr. Bennett, and these two officers are approaching uh, to assist. Now, it's, it's important to note, because we talked about race earlier, uh, the officer that took Mr. Bennett into custody is Hispanic. This officer is also Hispanic, and the officer wearing the body-worn camera is a sergeant, and he is uh, a black male. So go ahead, Carlos. And then stop when he, when he has him on the ground, okay? What, what, move, 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 move. Stop there. So as you can see, um, a review of this area where he's taken into custody it is approximately seven feet from the original sidewalk. Mr. Bennett bound over the wrought iron fencing and down into the roadway. Um, early Saturday morning, uh, late Friday night, or actually early Sunday morning, late Saturday night, this is Flamingo Boulevard. As everybody in the room knows, that's one of our busiest intersections uh, during the weekend. So. Besides taking him into custody in the roadway, we have concern for traffic at this point. And then you will see the firearm in possession of our officer there. And then I will talk uh, further about that later in the, in the presentation. Uh, so the officer that was in the greens will be standing at the railway providing cover to this officer. And then the sergeant is also what you're seeing from the body camera. Go ahead, Carlos. So, go ahead and stop it, Carl. so what happened was you saw the officer taking him in custody when he was prone on the roadway, placing him in handcuffs. Subsequently, they put him on his knees uh, adjacent to the patrol car, and he, his custody was released from the original officer to another officer uh, to take him away from the area, the immediate area, um, in the safety of other patrol cars out in the roadway. Go ahead. piece that just went by in the, in the narrative there, um, Mr. Bennett expressed to the officer his concern, obviously, for being taken into custody. He was doing nothing more than what he was asked to do. Uh, he also provided narrative that he was, they were told not to run. That's a very important piece in reference to his allegations. Go ahead.
Hey, he's complaining about his cup. He really didn't fight too much. So uh, I'm going to check his cup just to make sure that okay. Hey, you're being detained. Hey, you're being detained. What's the okay. matter, though? I did this dude took me on the bottom, so I got to my head. Go ahead and stop okay. it, Carlos. Another uh, um, allegation alleged by Mr. Bennett was uh, the officer had uh, placed a gun to his head and stated if he would move that we would blow uh, your fucking head off. Uh, I believe that's the correct narrative. Um, through our investigation, and like I said, this is totally based on facts known at the time. As of today, uh, we have not been able to confirm that statement by the officer. Uh, what we have been able to confirm um, through review of the video is the officer did, in fact, say, um, put your fucking uh, hands up and put your fucking palms together. So I think it's important for people to realize that um, it's a matter of doing a, a, a dynamic police in custody event. Um, and then subsequently, um, uh, you'll see the rest of it. Go ahead, Carlos. I don't know what happened with them. Man, I'm going to my life, man, for no reason. Okay. He's here, sir. Not you. What did you do with the other guy? I'm going to check your, ch your clubs real quick. Make sure they're not too sad, okay? statement there. Go ahead. Yeah. I have more to the door again. I thought no. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> So the officer you saw in the green to the rear of the patrol car was one of the original officers I described in the three-person element. Uh, he, after he, they completed the investigation within the Cromwell, he proceeded out to the roadway there uh, to talk to the custody officers and present them with the information they needed to know whether to release Mr. Bennett or not. He told them the investigation was complete. They determined there was not a shooter within the Cromwell and go ahead and uh, release the individual in, in the back of the car. At this point, none of the officers know who Mr. Bennett is other than they reacted to his suspicious actions and they placed him into custody. Alright, so you already said? I'm not mad at y'all, just this, this, I'm just... You were saying, this, we hear somebody shooting in there. Everyone's down, you're running. I'm trying to get out, my kid. Yeah, uh, stop, stop talking. I understand, but you still understand how that looks, though. Yeah. Okay, you're not in under arrest, we're going to get you out of here, okay? But we just have to make sure, because right now, all we know is people are shooting in there, is what we're hearing, and then you're running away, so we're making sure that's not you. Now, yeah. come out. And if it's not you, we, we don't have time to be out here talking to you. Do you have an ID on you? No, man. My name is Michael Bennett. Okay. Michael Bennett. Hey, we have Jersey Cover on the engineer side. Okay. Michael. We have a team. Okay. 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 Put 
Mr. Bennett in the uh, Jason Crosswalk area, leaving the Cromwell. So I had this uh, presented as part of the presentation in case anybody has any questions, reference reasonable suspicion uh, versus probable cause and the authority of our officers to have the ability to, to, deign, uh, to detain Mr. Bennett. I'll give you a second to read that and then we will continue. So I think it's important for everybody to understand how comprehensive this investigation was. As a normal matter of practice, if we receive a complaint as a police agency or our, my police agency, uh, we take each and every one of those complaints seriously. As we receive the complaint, no matter what the venue is or the method, uh, we receive the complaint. If we have evidence in support of the complaint or to refute the complaint, uh, we will close out the investigation at that point. So in normal practice, uh, we have a, basically an anonymous complaint by Mr. Bennett, and I mean anonymous because it was presented via social media. It wasn't directly towards the police department. Uh, there were some serious allegations uh, in his statements, and I thought it appropriate to conduct a thorough investigation uh, because it, it was far-reaching. It has uh, national implications, and more importantly, it disparaged my police department and the officers involved in this incident. So I thought it was very important for us to conduct, go ahead and conduct a thorough investigation. We had not received a formal directed complaint from Mr. Bennett or his attorney uh, in the last three days we did. Uh, via uh, electronic media, uh, a formal complaint was brought forward. And I will discuss that further here shortly. So as part of this investigation, we reviewed over 861 separate videos. Of those 861, we determined 193 of them were pertinent to the investigation. And today, you see a culmination of what we thought was instrumental in completing the investigation. So in detention, the complaint of detention, excessive detention, the total incident took approximately, approximately 10 minutes. Microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you not hearing it? Yeah, yeah just... Approximately 10 minutes, and his time at the car was approximately seven minutes. So you can see the detention wasn't excessive. 
He complained about his handcuffs. The officers loosened them. As soon as the officers started to realize there was not a shooter, Mr. Bennett was released. During the release, he was given the reason for his detention and he was apologized to for the detention. I want to say that I understand that being detained for a suspected felony is not a pleasant experience, but having said that, I also want to say the officers responding that night were heroic. They ran in versus away. They did what they were trained to do, not to wait, but to enter and control, secure and make the situation safe. Additionally, two other patrons were detained in similar fashion as Mr. Bennett. One of those individuals was a Hispanic male, and the other one was a black male. Like law enforcement around the country and globally, we are ever mindful of the threats, especially during busy weekends with large crowds. Officers reacted exactly what they were trained to do during the critical incident. I would expect nothing less, and the public we serve expect the same. As soon as the officers realized their no probable cause was present for Mr. Bennett's continued detention, he was released. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department is proud of the work this agency has done in the area of use of, in the area of, use of force reform. We took it upon ourselves seven years ago to change our policies and training to emphasize de-escalation and the preservation of life. We are considered a model agency. As the past has shown, this department is committed to transparency and accountability to the public we serve. We have a history of quickly releasing body-worn cameras, the footage associated with that, and the findings of use of force or critical incident investigations. So like I said, our current status on this investigation, we will uh, take it through completion, but barring any additional evidence, it's uh, basically finished. Um, so as far as uh, policy violations associated with the investigation, that will still yet to be determined, and that is not part of public information. So I'm happy to answer questions at this time. Uh, limiting it to this incident, I am not interested in responding to the situation associated with the NFL in the current um, situation. So directly stated to Mr. Bennett's allegation he was targeted for racially motivated excessive force. Your response is? Um, I believe the last 20 minutes answered that question, Mr. Ritter. Um, my response is there is no evidence that would uh, show that to be true. Um, you said there was no evidence the officer said that he was going to blow his head off. Was there any evidence found or did the officer talk to you in regards to maybe pointing a gun to his head? Uh, yes, he was, but that's part of an internal investigation, and like I said, Ricardo, we have not found any evidence that shows that he made that statement. That officer's body camera was off, though, right? Correct. Can you talk about that? So can Metro say that he didn't say that, or could he face consequences? No. From the evidence we know at this point, we determined he had not said that. There, if there's additional evidence that comes forward at a later date, we will evaluate that. But here's, here's what's important. It's a critical incident, dynamic incident. If the officer said it, he said it. If he didn't, he didn't. He was taking an individual who he believed to be an active shooter into custody. And the language associated with that may not be acceptable, but it's not a policy violation. Do you know why the camera wasn't on? Uh, he failed to activate it. He had been using it throughout the night on other incidents. In this situation, he became aware of Mr. Bennett's actions and gave chase. He just failed to activate it. There could be. Will there be? There could be. Sheriff, can you go back over the, the, you made a point of a note. People were told not to run? Correct. Can you amplify that a little bit for us? Well, there was different commands given during, uh, when the officers were in the stack and they were clearing the casino floor, um, they were telling people to stay in place, to get on the ground and do not run. Um, Mr. Bennett um, did not heed those directions. Uh, as you can see, several other people in the casino didn't heed those directions. They decided to seek safety, and that's understandable. But Mr. Bennett's actions uh, caught the officer's attention, along with the private security's attention, who uh, had pointed out Mr. Bennett, um, and our officers keyed on his actions. Sheriff, can you talk about the what 
is behind Metro telling people in a shooter situation, your instinct is to run. You hear gunshots, you run. And they're telling people to stay in place and get down. Can you describe why they would do that versus you know, telling everybody to get out? Well, it, it's human nature. Um, the reason why we would tell them uh, not to run and get down is because we're still trying to determine where the suspect is. The suspect may be secreted amongst those individuals, and we want to make sure we identify them. The suspect doesn't attempt to escape or flee associated with the other people fleeing the incident. I think it's important for us to identify the shooter and take that individual into custody immediately. So with, uh, as, as you mentioned, other people were seen running in the video. Um, what, what about Michael Bennett keyed um, security and officers in on him? I thought I had explained that, but I will clarify it again. You saw his actions going across uh, the floor there. He was in a crouched position, different than everybody else, going in a different direction than other patrons. And then he proceeded uh, along the bank of uh, slots there with purpose. Um, and the end of, here's the important piece, and I'm, you know what, I'm actually glad you asked that again, because the one thing I failed to uh, narrate, and maybe I did, but I forget at this point, is as he exited that doorway, he leaped over the railing um, that would that was not observed by any other officer of any individuals doing that so that was distinctive uh, so he was showing it was showing that he had purpose in his attempt to flee um, can you clarify when the formal complaint was filed the last three days as in this week or um, do you have that date no, we can I believe it was in the last three days Carl. and has, has the agency spoken to mr. Bennett or his uh, legal team uh, regarding these images have they been delivered to them uh, no the, there is uh, we're going through that process now we have spoken to his legal team we have offered them to come and uh, look at the video at their pleasure um, and they have not responded in that aspect will you identify the officers who had direct contact with mr. Bennett uh, no not at this point it's it's a continued investigation I just want to make sure I'm clear what I heard and saw. Uh, when he was talking with the officers, I didn't think I heard him say or complain or voice concern that an officer had pointed a gun at his stomach. I think, but can you, again, just make sure I'm clear on, on what his complaint was at the time? I don't have his, uh, his complaint in front of me, uh, but in my review of the, of the, can you get to that part in the video? Oh, I think he just went by it. Did that answer your question? Hey, I don't know what. And in, in the narrative, I, I believe in his uh, letter to the world, he provided narrative. So to that to that effect. And in your review, you never found evidence of a statement about blowing his head off. No, not so far. We have not found anything. Like I did state, we did find evidence of um, the officer directing him to put his hands out and up and also to put his palms together. And there was a gun to his head. Or we did not find evidence of a gun to his head? No, we didn't find evidence of a gun to his head. You can see in the one video, the video and the TMZ video that he has a, a, a gun out. Mm -hmm. um, to be utilized in taking the individual into custody, but as far as it pointing directly at his head, we couldn't see that. Obviously, this was a very national story, um, even put out on social media and Correct. TV and all that before coming to, as a formal complaint to you guys. What? Um, well, it wasn't a formal complaint to us. I want to provide that clarification. A formal right. To you guys, right. Correct. Um, what? What has it done to the, the department, to your staff, to officers? Um, if anything, has it had any well, they're interested to hear what I have to say today, just like anybody else. Um, you know, what, what happens in an investigation, uh, the department is basically sequestered. They're, they're not privy to the information as we go through the investigation, so it's troublesome for the, the officers. Um, but I have made a public statement to my department that I support them in their actions. Uh, and, as you, and going through the evidence, it's evident they acted appropriately. For context, Sheriff. How many officers responded to that uh, incident at Crown Lodge? I don't have that exact number for you. I can get it for you, Ken. Sir, any comment on the union's letter to the NFL? No, I said I would not comment on that. And uh, by private security, do you mean the Crown Lodge security? Uh, yes. Of these 
officers had previous complaints of this sort against him? I don't believe so, to the best the, of my knowledge. Uh, what's the policy when you detain someone and the supervisors explain the incident to him and uh, it appears like he had a complaint. Uh, is that is the person responsible for filing that complaint or is the supervisor uh, advised to let him know that he could file a um, it can happen in, in numerous ways, Ricardo, but in that situation, there was not a supervisor present there. The supervisor um, was in another location. Uh, I'm not sure which body camera that was. If it was the supervisor, I wasn't aware of that, but if they say they wish to make a complaint, it's incumbent upon the supervisor to take it immediately. Um, if they don't want to take it immediately or provide it immediately, they can do it, you know, different venues. They can do it by phone. They could do it electronically. They can do it in person. Uh, there's numerous ways. But it's incumbent upon the officer, or the ser sergeant and or supervisor uh, to take a complaint if one is wishing to be made. Two or three years ago, if a complaint like this were brought to you, complaint, letter, complaint, were brought to you, you wouldn't have body camera. No, absolutely okay. not. No. Um, what have we learned from this? Event? The success of body cameras. That's my opinion. I, I, you know, and I believe um, I was. I was also a pushing back on body cameras when they originally presented um, because I thought that was a, uh, people were making allegations that my officers had no integrity. But as a result of what's going on across the world, I think it's appropriate. It's transparency. And it gives us the ability, more often than not, to dispel the complaint given by a citizen. Uh, so it's had uh, both um, negative consequences to police officers and post positive consequences to police officers. And I think the positives far outweigh the negative. After, after your review, 861 videos, 193 pertinent, and the relevant ones that we saw, the actions of, uh, um, how do you assess the actions of your officers in dealing with Mr. Bennett? I believe they acted appropriately and professionally, um, especially the officers that detained them within the patrol vehicle. I think they did an appropriate amount of explanation for our actions and ensured his uh, comfort, and then he was about allowed to go on his way. If you had noticed in the video, uh, Mr. Bennett extended his hand in shaking the officer's hands. So I think it's important for you to recognize that. All right, thank you very much. People were detained that night. Two other ones, similar to Mr. Bennett.